Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Kingfisher Knits podcast. Um, for those of you who have not watched my first episode, my name is Madeline. Um, you can find me on Ravelry as Madeline Windsor. Um, that's written as all one word, um, but you can find it below in the description box, the link. Um, on Instagram, I am Kingfisher Knits. Um, I also have a Ravelry group um, called the Kingfisher Knits group on Ravelry. And um, yeah, so I had said that I thought I wouldn't be back for several weeks after my first episode. Um, and I realized that it would have been more than just a couple of weeks, but probably almost a month for um, how the trip that we're gonna take soon um, is going to fall. Um, and so I thought I would try and squeeze in something now so it didn't feel also for me, maybe to get um, out of practice or lose the courage to do it again, to try and split that time up. So I don't know how much time I will have. Um, again, for those of you who didn't watch my last episode, um, this is um, this podcast is coming from Zurich, where I live with my husband and my two young children. Um, I wanted to start off by saying thank you to all of the people who did watch my first episode um, and who subscribed or and or liked it um, and I also wanted to say an extra special thank you for people who reached out to me either leaving a comment on the video or messaging me on Ravelry or um, on Instagram. Thank you very much, it's very appreciated and it certainly gave me the courage to do it again. Um, because, yeah, I think with no feedback, I probably wouldn't do it again because um, I'm not doing this just for me. As I said last time, I really wanted to have a chance to engage with all the people um, who I like to also follow and interact with via all these wonderful forms of social media that we have um, in, this modern, in these modern days. Um, so I will start, I'll go straight into the knitting, um, and I wanted to start with um, a finished object. This finished object um, is not my most recent finished object. I had, I did finish it a few weeks ago, and I have worn it a lot since, but I didn't want to show, like, you know, lots of things last episode. I wanted to try and um, smooth, uh, smooth things out and bring bring something to show each time, even if I haven't actually finished something in this last week, which I haven't. Um, and this is my snow melt shawl. This was a mystery knit along um, by Helen Stewart of the Curious Handmaid uh, podcast. And it's the very first mystery knit along that I ever did. And I just felt, I felt confident because so many, nearly all of um, Helen's designs that I see coming out are lovely and I just I was excited to to join in I guess and I felt like I had quite a few you know single skeins of lovely sock yarn and what have you and I would manage to find something that whatever the pattern might be and um, they would go together so here is the shawl so as this is not a spoiler this the full pattern is now released you can see um, Helen's own finished shawl. It is a very large shawl. It uses, you know, the majority of three skeins of fingering weight yarn and um, it is a semicircular shawl. This is a, what's called a half pie shawl, um, which was great fun to knit. It has a beautiful... Apologies for the construction noise outside. Nothing I can do. Um, beautiful I-cord edging here. And I mean, so many podcasters have knit this, and I'm sure you've heard their comments on all of, I can't, I don't think I've heard anybody who didn't have positive things to say about this. You get to do, you know, plenty of fun changing colours, uh, simple work, a bit of lace, which, which is garter lace, a bit more lace, and then this edging. And I was um, not perfectly well behaved when doing the mystery knit along. I did check um, in some of the spoiler threads, not at the very beginning because I was keeping up with it and then I had to put it on hold when I did the test knit for, um, for Mina of the Knitting Expert podcast and I didn't have, I need to get, get that finished so that took most of my time and by that point people had um, almost finished or had started finishing these shawls and I couldn't resist looking and I was 
apprehensive about how it finished. So I don't, I don't mind um, these kinds of edgings, but on such a big shawl, I thought that, that might be like really dominating or what have you, but I did it. Um, I think I altered the pattern in that I did, I loved my colour A so much that I did, I stopped with colour B here one row early and switched to colour A just so that it wouldn't just be the last row in the bind off, but you know, another row. Just use a bit more of that yarn up. Um, and I'm happy with that decision. So which yarns did I use? Um, uh, these, I still have, you know, these are the leftovers of the yarns that I use. So colour A, which is absolutely my favourite colour in this shawl, um, is this, um, it's called, yeah, it's called Moaning Myrtle. It's by Nora George, surprisingly. <laughs> but I, I absolutely adore this yarn. Um, and it's on her singles base, which she is her Allthorpe sock. So it's 100% superwash merino singles, um, 366 meters for 100 grams. And it's just very light cream with little bits of dove gray, and then these speckles of uh, sort of hot pink, lighter pink, and here you can't really see one, but also this purple. I love this so much and I will definitely be buying more of, um, of this yarn when I get the chance. Um, and colour B uh, was Hello Gorgeous by Lolo Did It. I have the tag here. So this is Lolo Did It. This is Hello Gorgeous, which is a very dusky pink, um, a sort of, I don't know, classic ancient rose type pink. Um, and this is on her everyday sock, which is just a 75-25 merino nylon. And this one is, it says in yards, 463 yards for 100 grams. So it's over 400 meters. And the color C um, was another single ply uh, yarn. And this is from Hedgehog Fibers. This is their skinny singles, which um, is uh, 366 meters for 100 grams of um, superwash merino single. Um, and this, so this is the tag. Mine was actually a very generous skin. It was 110 grams. You can see I've written on there. 110 grams, exclamation mark. And it was, uh, the colorway is stone. So it's this kind of brown, it's actually quite on the brown um, spectrum, but the three of them together, they were out of my comfort zone. I mean, my favorite colors are all blues and teals and I like pink and I do wear quite a lot of pink but especially on this very pale pink um, I don't know I just I think if it weren't a mystery knit along I wouldn't have picked these colors somehow it's a bit strange but really really enjoyed uh, working on that and I have worn it so much since so so much so even if you didn't take part in the, in the mystery knit along um, obviously the pattern is available and it's just to die for. So I'm going to put that there. Um, and I did shine up, sign up for the Shawl Society season two. I what, didn't take part in season one and I did nearly buy a couple of the patterns when she released them individually but I, I haven't for now because um, I had other, other plans but then when I saw season two I thought even if I don't get to knit them you know as they come out um, it's excellent excellent value for money for Helen's patterns and I'm really really excited to see what they'll be um, so that's my first finished object and my second finished object is something that I finished a long time ago um, but I wanted to show it to you this week because um, it's a design of mine um, which I recently got the rights back to It's actually um, the first design I ever had uh, published it was originally published in um, the I like knitting magazine which is a digital um, knitting magazine, so online knitting magazine based in the US. Um, so yeah, it was the first design I ever had published and um, it's just been added, added to my Ravelry store. So here it is, it's, it was a little uh, shrug or bolero or bolero, depending on how you want to pronounce it, um, designed for a little girl and it has these little flower design motifs here all along the bottom edge and also on the sleeve there. You can see. Um, so this design, um, I call it Fiorellina. Um, so 
it's an Italian, fiorellina actually is not a correct word in Italian because um, the flower, il fiore, in Italian is a masculine word, so um, the, a little flower would be a fiorellino with an O at the end. But um, it's for a little girl, so I made a little play on words and said fiorellina. So it kind of means little flower in Italian, but not strictly speaking. Um, and it was published under the name Lemon Drop Shrug in the magazine, which is fine, but I have repub when I've now that I've republished it, I have um, called it Fiorellina, um, which obviously comes from the little floral motif. And it is um, a seamless design, except for very few stitches which have to be seamed here at the very end under the arm and on the sleeve. Um, it's bottom up, it's all knit in one piece, so the, the border is knit as you go along, which is, um, this is a seed stitch border. Um, so it's knit bottom up, the sleeves have been started separately, and then a knit on here, and then there's a, a raglan sleeve. Um, and I finished it here with, I made little eye cords, two little eye cords and tied them on to tie it together. Um, it's a knit in fingering weight, uh, this one's knit in 100% merino. Um, some of my testers who test knit this did knit this, I think, in either cotton or cotton uh, merino blends. And it's obviously a lovely, lovely little um, garment for a little girl in the spring and summertime. And I had the idea that also, you know, if it was for like a little flower girl at a wedding, you could finish it off here with some, with some ribbons instead of the eye cord. Anyway, that pattern is now available um, on in my Ravelry store. And um, it's also available in four sizes. So it's, I think the first size is, so it's age is two to three years, then three to four, five to six, and seven to eight are the four different sizes. The sizes are a little bit generous because I think there's nothing worse than knitting um, something for a kid, you know, for a grandchild or a nephew or your own children, um, and then finding out that it doesn't fit because it's too small. And of course it being too big might be an issue, but better it's too big and they can still wear it in the future. But anyway, I do say what the recommended ease should be for it and what the actual finished chest sizes are. Um, so you can also pick a size accordingly, even if your child is bigger or smaller than um, the age, that's, um, than what I've named, recommended for each age. One final thing I will say is that I had to knit this sample very fast. The turnaround time was, was very quick and I did alter the patterns because here when I, I thought that this little detail here would block out and it didn't, so the pattern is altered that this is a, a more um, even bottom edge here. Anyway, that is Fiorellina and everything will be linked in the show notes. I didn't say at the top of the episode that the show notes are found um, in the Ravelry group, there will be a link to that in the box below this video and um, to where you can find the show notes. Um, so that was all the finished items that I wanted to show you and then I thought I would show you some of my uh, works in progress. Um, the first, the main, th one of the main things, or well, two of the main things I'm working on at the moment, I'm afraid I can't show you because they are design work samples, but one of them I can show you the yarn. I purchased this yarn myself and almost immediately decided what I wanted to do with it, but I'm um, having waiting a long time um, to actually cast it on. So um, this is yarn from the Yarn Enabler. So that's Amanda. Um, she's one half of the Die Another Day podcast, which is an excellent podcast. It's one of the first ones I started watching. Um, I think the very first was Mina, the Knitting Expat, and then from there on I quickly found the Grocery Girls, Die Another Day, um, and Two Tangled Skeins, uh, all of which are in Canada, funnily enough, and then the list of podcasts I watch has grown from there. But um, this was actually um, a set that was dyed up as part of a dye-off that um, Amanda, the yarn enabler, did with her friend Christina, the cosy knitter. So they had um, a picture um, for inspiration, which I believe was a some kind of tropical bird, and then they each dyed up um, a colourway. I actually should have got, I have both of them because I love, I mean the colours were very much my colours so I bought both of them because the final yarns are very different because Christina um, dyes self-striping sock yarn. Um, Amanda has done also but she didn't for this one. Anyway, so the, what you got in both of them was a main skein of about 85 grams and then a contrasting 
a skein of I think 30 grams, which ideally you know is meant for heels, toes, and cuffs. I'm not making socks with this one though. Um, anyway, so this was the main skein, and this base is an 8020 Superwash Merino nylon, and it's just full of these glorious blues, sort of both. I don't know, like royal blue and then fading into teal. The teal is not getting picked up enough here. There is more greeny teal in this. And then obviously this beautiful purple that is picking up really well. Don't know if I move back, you see more of the green, but you don't. Instead, this is more of a really true rich teal, a lot more green um, in it compared to the main skein. So I'm currently doing a, a design using up these two <clears throat> and hopefully that will be finished soon and I can show it off. Um, and another work in progress that I can show you though are a pair of socks which I cast on. Unfortunately, I have not stopped at the best point to show you, but anyway, that's life. Sorry. Um, I do have a preference to knit my socks, if they're vanilla socks, um, to knit them two at a time. Um, at the same time, on one long um, circular needle. Um, that first time I ever knit socks, I knit them two at a time. Um, so some people ask me, is it harder? I would say I don't. I never thought about it being harder, or I kind of thought that you know you need two socks, um, so why not knit them two at a time? I mean, the first time I ever think this, well, maybe the second time I ever knit mittens, I knit them two at a time for the same reason. You get them done at the same time, and. Um, so I have knit socks singly since, and yeah, I can see it's simpler, but I feel like I still get to the point of having, you know, a complete finished object, that being two socks, um, sooner uh, if I do them two at a time. So this is beautiful yarn. This is yarn from um, Hedro Yarns, <clears throat> which is in the UK. And this is a Tweedy sock base, which is uh, 85 Superwash Merino, 15% Donegal Nep, I think it's meant to be said nep, not neep, not sure. Anyway, and that is 400 meters for 100 grams, and this is in the foxglove colorway. And it's just beautiful. So this is one of the balls. What I tend to do, I don't actually split my skein in half exactly. Um, depending on what I'm doing, if I'm gonna be doing contrasting uh, heels, toes, and cuffs, I tend to wind off about 35 grams into one ball. Um, in this case, I'm going to knit the whole sock um, out of the same yarn. And so to be safe, I think I wound off 40 grams. To be honest, it's probably a bit <clears throat> on the safe side. But it just means that at the end, I don't end up with... Um, I try and use as much as I can of the smaller one, and then I've got a more of a decent chunk of yarn left in one ball. Anyway, these are my two balls, uh, my two cakes. And um, I pull from the outside because I don't like the collapsing cake from the, uh, when you pull from the middle and the possible yarn bath, which can be really annoying. Um, and this is the first time I've ever had any tweed uh, type yarn, so it's, and it's interesting to knit with. And <coughs> this is how far I've got, so I have just basically finished, this is why I said it's a stupid point to show, so I've just finished one heel, not even finished actually, I'm still working back across it. Um, so I did a short-ish cuff, not super, super short, but still, um, I don't know what that is, maybe about four inches. In total, I did a twisted rib. So these are cuffed down. This, obviously, I did a twisted one by one twisted rib for the top. And then, um, yeah, about four inches for the cuff. And these are going to be, these are not for myself. Um, I'm knitting these on two millimeter, higher, higher. Mm, these are not sharps, are they? These are steels. Yeah, higher, higher steels. I did that because this, while it's a, sort of a plump looking yarn, it's kind of, I don't know, it felt kind of thin, but I have to say I'm slightly regretting my choice. I have knit maybe three pairs of socks on two millimeter needles, which I think are zeros, right? In the UK, yeah, in zeros. And I I think my ideal sock needle is definitely a 2.25 millimeter. Um, I just didn't seem to, couldn't find one at the time when I really wanted to start these, um, start these socks. Um, but what I found is that my gauge isn't tighter on two millimeter, needle, millimeter needles, possibly just because they're so small and uh, they're really quite fiddly for me. My gauge actually is looser. So they're a pain to knit with and I get the wrong gauge. 
So I've had to knit, um, this is only a 56 stitch sock, um, despite the fact that I normally would do um, the person I'm knitting these for, I probably would do more of a 64 stitch sock. But I knit for a little bit and realised immediately that it wasn't going to work, so I had to start again. Anyway, I'm hoping that those will be done pretty soon. Um, and they're living in a really cute little project bag. And this was made for me by my friend, um, my friend Philippa, who is another mum here in Zurich, another expat from the UK, and look at the lining inside. Isn't it lovely? Philippa knows I love this bag and she was really happy. I saw her this week, when it, the day I started knitting on these actually. Um, so I think she was glad that I was actually using it. <coughs> Excuse me. So that has been uh, taking up a bit of my time, not least because I actually started them twice. I did want to say just one more thing about um, knitting two at a time uh, socks. Um, for peop I started knitting them, um, I think I followed a tutorial from the very pink um, from Very Pink Knits. I'm sure you all know Very Pink Knits a channel on YouTube. I learned a lot of what I know about knitting from, from Stacey. And um, she has a tutorial for two at a time toe-up socks, um, but not starting with Judy's Magic Cast On. Uh, instead, starting with a provisional cast on, you knit a short row toe, and then you um, start knitting up <coughs> for the foot. And um, I did that. I think I'm, I mean, I since have done the Judy's Magic cast on um, to do top socks, and I much prefer that. Um, but in, in, regardless, um, that's a good video um, to see yet a different way that one can to construct a sock, and it's what started me off, at least, understanding how I could do um, two at a time. Um, for two at a time cuffed down, I very much recommend um, the uh, Mina from the Knitting Expat podcast has a tutorial um, on how she does her two at a time socks. And to be honest, I mostly follow a similar, the similar method to, to what she does. So I'll cast on, um, if I'm doing cuff down, I'll cast on one cuff, I'll knit the whole cuff, put it aside, knit the whole other cuff, and then I unite them on the one long circular to, to do everything two at a time from that point on. And if I'm doing toe up, I do a similar thing in that I knit the toe first, and once I finish with the toe increases, um, I put that one to one side and then I knit the other toe. Um, and I find that that just makes things a lot easier. I have done both cuff down and toe up socks uh, starting from the very beginning two at a time. Um, and you can do it, it's totally doable. Um, but it is very fiddly at the very beginning. And if you have to put it down because you've got a kid who's crying or something's gone on, it's really a nightmare and you kind of almost have to start again. Um, so it's just much easier to start in both cases for me, cuff down and toe up to start one first. <coughs> I don't know why I'm coughing, I'm sorry. Um, so I did have, I think, one other um, work in progress that I wanted to show you, um, which is again socks. Um, this is one of the longest whips I've had going, and it's kind of disgraceful, um, but it got put to one side, um, and it just waits, and every now and then I pick it up again. Anyway, this was, I think, the second pair of socks that I ever knit. I haven't finished them yet, so I can't really say I've knit this pair of socks, but it's... Um, uh, this is sock one. I don't have any sock blockers. I've always thought, yes, yeah, so sure, sock blockers are nice, but you don't need sock blockers unless you have a podcast or want to take pretty pictures because you design socks. Now I need sock blockers because now I have to show them to you. But anyway, I will just pull out the design a little bit. So these are, um, this is a sock designed by Cookie A. Um, I've knit one sock. I will just show you um, them quickly in the book where they come from. So this is the this is the design. Um, this is called her. This is her Angie sock pattern, and this is the um, her book sock innovation. And I'm knitting this out of um, yarn which comes uh, from comes from Zurich. Comes from here. I'm trying to see if I have um, a tag in here. I do. Here we go. So this is from, um, there's a small yarn shop outside of Zurich um, and she also has an online store and well worth checking out. Um, this is called Spin Web Stube. Um, this is her twister sock wool, so um, Sockenwolle twister. And this is 75% um, extra fine wool 
doesn't say merino, um, and 25% silk. And it's a really, really lovely base. Um, and I got this also because I was really interested in um, trying out some bases for socks that didn't have nylon in. Um, and this is 100 grams, 420 meters. And it costs, I mean, basically less than $15. It's really, really, really good value. And, and it's really lovely yarn. Um, she doesn't have, um, she does have, this is her hand dyed yarn. She sells her hand dyed yarn and she also stocks some other, um, uh, other yarn companies, sort of small yarn companies. Um, and she doesn't name her colours, they just have numbers. So this is 933. And um, I don't know, it made me think of a Monet uh, kind of, you know, watercolour. Um, and I also love how it looks also on the underside of the foot, in the, when you have the stocking, stock in it. Stock in it. Oh, that's American. Sorry. No offence to Americans, but I say <laughs> stocking stitch. And this has, is a heel flap and gusset with a slip stitch heel. And these I knit, I'm knitting for my mother. She knows, she's tried this one on, uh, we know it fits her fine, and this is as much progress as I have on the second one. It's a pretty long sock, you know, it's all, it's, um, it's a pattern sock all the way around, with a very long uh, leg. So I will get there, she will get them. Uh, probably not in time for her birthday this year, maybe a late birthday present, her birthday's at the beginning of May. Anyway, and I'm knitting these on, um, on Chowgu needles. Uh, this I'm doing one at a time. Um, these were the first ever lace socks, and only lace socks, <laughs> that I've knit, and I didn't want to try them two at a time. I thought that was a recipe for disaster because if you didn't get, you know, all the way around on both of them um, every time uh, before you had to put them down, then it was going to be a disaster. Um, I believe that these are 25 millimeter needles, US 1.5s. Yes, they are. Um, so the Anisa Chagu red lace. I only have um, the red lace needles, which are the slight, which are the uh, the more pointy ones, which, and I really, really love them. Um, I was actually going to talk a little bit about needles uh, if I get some time at the end of this podcast. I might not manage this time. Maybe that is something I can do next time. Um, I had a, a selection of needles, but not not a huge selection. But I have paid a lot of attention to, you know, what I've thought about each needle that I've knit with. And um, this is living in a lovely project bag from uh, Mrs. Brown's Bags. Where's her tag? From Mrs. Brown's Bags. And um, this was actually, she did a bag of the month club, so you didn't know what the fabric would be. You just knew it was going to be one of her knitted swatch fabrics. I believe that this was a yarn ink. Um, Yarnic yarn, but I'm not positive, but I just, I really, I couldn't have been happy. I mean, it's really, really beautiful. This is very much me. Again, with a sort of base of blue, some purple and something else thrown in for a bit of fun. <coughs> so, um, yeah, I had thought that I might talk a little bit about needles, but I think that um, perhaps I will leave that for another time. Um, what I did want to talk about um, was a little bit of dream knitting. Um, I spend a lot of time doing dream knitting or dreaming about what I'm going to knit. And things come and go through my mind. Um, sometimes I'm really keen on knitting something and other times and then it might fade away or I'll just realise that um, actually it's better to do something else with, with that yarn. And um, one project which I have absolutely all lined up um, that I definitely want to make Sorry, excuse me while I grab the thing. So um, this is the Recoletta cardigan by Hoki Locatelli. And it is a beautiful um, uh, cardigan, obviously uh, with you know full length sleeves. It's pretty also long in the body and with this beautiful, beautiful lace. And it also has um, lace across the whole of the back which you can see. Oh, my usual problem of not understanding where the camera is. Sorry, excuse me. Oh, it's over there, sorry. There, the lace will look back. So this would be another one. This was like the long-term project for me to replace um, the Soubrette lace weight cardigan that I showed you um, last episode. So this would be something that's gonna take a long time. Um, but this was gifted to me, actually, this pattern um, in the uh, get your young wishes granted, which was in last, which was last, um, it was in autumn, wasn't it, last year? 
Um, and someone gifted me this pattern from my wish list. And I think the very same week, um, the Plucky Knitter had a sale on their Traveller Aran Weight yarn. Um, so, so I've got, and I've bought it. It was really, they had a really good deal. I think it, it was really discounted. Um, it was at least 30% off and either free shipping or sort of fixed $5 shipping or something. Um, so this is their, uh, the base is Traveller Aran. That is, yes, yeah, 65, 20, 15, extra fine superwash merino, mulberry silk and yak. It's insanely wonderful, this yarn. I do have um, a skein of their Traveller Sport, which I've already knit a hat with. Um, it's really, really amazing. Um, I bought... And they'll fall out. Let's take them out. There we go. I bought not four, but five skeins of this, enough to make the cardigan in my size. Um, and the colorway um, for this is Wonderlust. It's this beautiful tonal gray. It's a little bit more gray than it's coming out there, but it definitely does have some brown in it, which gives it um, that kind of look. So this is something I really, really, really want to knit. Um, I kind of was holding back, and that's why I haven't wound even one skein yet, um, but I probably should so I can at least get the gauge swatch done so I know, you know, and I'm all set um, to get started when I want to. Um, but that is definitely, definitely something which is getting made as soon as I can, I can manage to have enough time to sit down and properly plan that. Um, and another dream knit, it's all garments, all the, all the dream knitting right now is garments. Um, so I'm sure many of you know that um, um, Andrea Mowry came out with uh, her So Faded sweater design. So it's a, I mean, it's a simple top-down raglan, um, just with the wonderful idea of um, using uh, speckled, you know, ha you know hand-dyed and speckled skeins and fading them through um, into each other. And to be honest, and that's not what I plan to do with it right now. Probably that will, that, no, I'm almost certain that will happen. I already have my eye on yarn from Tracy of Nora George to make sort of a proper, you know, in, properly in the true vein of this sweater design. But, um, you know, I like Andrea Mowry's designs and her, her sense of proportion and sizing. So I also, I mainly bought this originally just thinking, great, a nice top down raglan. Um, I trust her design and her and her sizing, and I can knit myself just a simple, um, a simple jumper. Sorry, we we call it a jumper or pullover, not a sweater in England. Uh, that's an American term, and obviously in knitting in the knitting world, American um, Americans represent a lot, <laughs> a large proportion of the knitting community, and so I started saying a lot of these more American words, which to me don't sound weird because I'm used to talking to and thinking in uh, the knitting world. But when I say it to other people in my family, they kind of look at me like, why are you calling it a sweater, darling? It's a pullover or it's a jumper. Anyway. Um, and for this, I have again yarn from the Plucky Knitter. And this is yarn that I got in a D stash a little while back. And um, I honed in on it, both because it was enough to make um, a jumper for myself. Um, and the colour, but especially because of the blend. Um, so this is, I've got two skeins here and the other one is here. This is not as red as it's appearing on screen. It is got quite a lot more pink in it. It's really like a beautiful white, a touch more towards pink than a wine red. Maybe if I'm, it's getting a bit pink when I put it closer, but it's deeper than that. So somewhere, eh, it's not completely wrong, but it is a bit, it's a bit deeper than that. Um, and this is uh, the Oxford base, and I, so they now sell Oxford 2.0, so I'm, I don't know if that means, I know the, the content is the same in that it's merino and cashmere, um, but I also know, and I believe, I don't know if it's another spin, another way of spinning that they have um, for the Oxford 2.0 yarn, or if it's a different yardage, or what exactly is the difference. What I do know, because I, I actually asked 
plucking it in myself. They're really, really good if you ever have questions. They're really good at getting back to you. Um, just to check, because in all of their tags, they always write SW Merino, so Superwash Merino, and here it just says Merino. And it also, for being a yarn with cashmere in and being Merino, you touch it, I mean, it's not rough at all, but it doesn't have that immediate, that sort of butter soft feel. It's not like, oh, you know, kittens couldn't be softer type, <laughs> type feeling that you have with a lot of Superwash Merino cashmere yarns. And I think that's because it's not superwash treated. So I was actually really, really keen to try out something that was not superwash. Um, all, and especially for um, such, you know, a proper, a proper pullover that is seamless. Because uh, seamless cardigans are one thing, but when something's got to be, you know, pulled on and off over your head, um, if it doesn't have the um, added strength and structure of seams, then Sometimes, not always, these things can tend to stretch out, and especially when you when you wash them, and there's a lot of yarn, even if it's fingering weight, it's you know, three four hundred grams of wet wool, and um, you know, try as you might when you block it and and what have you, there it's more of a tendency to stretch out with superwash yarns, and so I really wanted to make myself a pullover that was made with um, the non superwash yarn. So these three skeins are enough for me to make myself. Um, the size I would want of this of this top down top down raglan and um, I hope that that will be enough that I so I'm definitely going to make it not the cropped body you know body the sort of foot to my full hip more or less and then as much as I have left um, for the sleeves I doubt I'll have enough to make um, a full you know full length sleeves and the full length body that I'd like um, in total these are uh, 1290 yards so I might have enough I already quickly tried to swatch and I didn't have um, the right gauge I didn't use the needles the needle size that I would have gone for um, because they're already in use and so I quickly uh, did up a little gauge swatch on one uh, size larger needles and I didn't have gauge I'm probably gonna have to go down um, either to the needle size recommended or even down one more. So I think it's 3.75 is the recommended um, for the gauge. Sorry, just knocked something on the floor. Um, but let me see here. Where's the needles? Three, yeah, 3.75. So I for sure I'm going to need a 3.75 or even a 3.5, I think. Um, I don't know if it's just a comp this particular yarn, what have you, but that looked like that's probably going to be necessary. So I immediately um, hopped online and ordered myself some more tips and cables for my higher, higher shop interchangeable set. So hopefully those will arrive um, soon and I can get another swatch done and see, see if I'm on track to be able to start that jumper. Okay. So just at the very end, I just wanted to mention um, again um, my Ravelry group. Um, if you want to um, join in on the Cal, um, last time I didn't say what Cal meant. Um, I know because my mother was like, what's a Cal? <laughs> a Cal is a knit along. I'm sure that everyone who watches this and who cares or is invested in the content um, knows what that means. But anyway, uh, I am um, hosting a knit along in my group for my design, the Patronus shawl. Um, if you would like to join in or maybe you've already bought the pattern um, and you've already started, many people have. I've been amazed by how many projects have already popped up on Ravelry. It's really quite humbling to see, um, you know, people otherwhere elsewhere all around the world knitting um, something that I designed um, and all you know so many of them um, all together so um, if you want to join in with the Cal um, you can as I said it officially kicks off on May 1st so I will not be opening a, a finished object thread until next week so until May 1st has passed um, but uh, you can already jump in on the chatter thread and say what you're what you're up to um, to in order to to enter um, for a prize, you will need um, it to have finished um, your shawl by June 15th um, and post a photo of it in the finished objects thread. You will also need to be a member of the group um, and you will also um, can get an extra entry if you use um, yarn by Nora George. And that's true if you use one of her kits, um, which she's currently dying up this week for all of those, those of you, all 
of those of you who purchased a kit. Um, and But also, if you didn't manage to get your hands on a kit, but you have some of her yarn that you'd like to use, by all means use that, and you would get two entries for that. Um, so that just means that you're allowed to post your finished shawl twice. Um, and there will be prizes, but again, I'm going to announce all of that once the Cal has officially kicked off in May. Um, so yeah, I think that that's um, everything that I wanted to talk about this time. Um, I really hope that um, everybody who enjoyed uh, watching last time, um, who enjoyed enough to subscribe, also enjoyed this episode. And I think um, next episode I'm going to try and have um, some content either on um, my take or advice on um, some of the needles I've worked with or perhaps um, a certain, certain type of technique. And um, yeah, I mean, if anyone has anything that they did want me to talk about um, specifically, um, then do just let me know. I'm, I'm very uh, willing to hear any, um, any input that anyone has. So until then, um, I hope everybody has um, a wonderful end to April um, and I will see you all in May. Bye!